is only recorded. Hello, we are live. Which is not. We are recording. Hello, we are recording. Uh, today is January 22nd, 2017. And I have with me um, Elena. Hey, Elena. Hello. Elena Kapulnik and James, Jim Ernst Charles, our wonderful channeler. Hey, Hello. Jim. Hey. Hi. So I am, I'm reading now the last week I'm listening to Wilcock and um, Kari Good about the new uh, developments about their story about the Blue Sphere Alliance, basically. And of course, there is lots of questions, follow-up questions, and I want to ask Jim first, and then Elin about the same topics. I want to keep it positive, as, as much as positive as possible. Of course, we want to, to be in the know, but we don't want to focus on uh, really bad stuff. We want to focus on positive stuff. So my understanding is that it's like a new season on a TV series. All the characters are there, but the storylines are now kind of, some lines are inflated a lot. So we knew there is there was a secret program by humans. We knew there was a runaway civilization. We knew there were draconians, reptilians, um, all sorts of beings, the habitation program, we all knew that. But now the runaway civilization is sort of inflated a lot. and. Um, and uh, the blue spheres, I never paid attention to them. We, we, we love orbs, any types of orbs, but but now the blue spheres and blue avians are uh, stepping in the forefront. And um, tall uh, orange yellow beings with triangular faces and wobbly bodies. So this is all members of blue sphere alliance. Triangular. Uh, Blue Evans and Blue Spheres, which are beings and very smart beings, very uh, highly intelligent, sentient, conscious beings. Uh, so I invite Jim, you give us a blessing and go into channeling. Mm, yeah, let's give a blessing and go into channeling mode and uh, invite whoever can shed a light on the Blue Sphere and the Alliance and the new developments in that area. Okay. Um because I know nothing about it whatsoever. You're the one that, you read the book and you know something about it, so you won't know what kind of questions to ask, I guess. Right, you don't have to know. <laughs> okay. No, we, I know. You already channeled the, uh, how do you call them? The Blue Evans, you, you channeled a couple days ago, so it, we already started that conversation. Oh, okay. Alrighty then, hold on, let me give a blessing. Thank you. And then I will uh, channel whoever wants to come in and answer questions. Uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful time of information, of community with one another, with uh, sharing of energies and thoughts and processes. We thank God for this uh, time, for being able to be with one another in friendship and in great informational times. Um, much love is coming and much information. We thank God that he is being so helpful to our civilization and to all the world for many things. So praise you and thank you for all that you do. We also want to just ask that you keep your light on us. Keep your thoughts with us and light our paths so that we go forward in integrity, honor, and justice to all beings. Uh, we praise you and thank you for your love that is uh, inseparable from any being and that it is all inclusive and is with us always. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see who comes. So, Elena, if you have a question and um, you don't have a moment, just raise your hand, give me a sign, I will I will give you uh, time to speak. All 
this is our initial contact. We wish to make contact. Testing. Testing is good. This is initial contact. Testing. Second testing is good. Is the communication working properly? Uh, I assume so. We can hear you. We are starting to hear you as well. One moment, please. Thank there you. is some. Yes. Speak, please. Hello, I'm Max. I'm on uh, Earth Solar System. Contact has been made. We are recording you, but we are not broadcasting. Why is it that you would want to record? Uh, we collect the information and then share it. We are not telepathic yet. Not much telepathic yet. So we just record and broadcast using uh, YouTube. Acceptable. All right. Um, who is speaking, please? My name is Ores. Ores? Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Ores. You are welcome, yes. Thank you. Are you of which species? Are you from Blue Sphere and from the Blue Sphere Alliance? We are part and parcel of the Blue Sphere Alliance, yes. Welcome. Which component are you? Triangular. Yay. As you call, triangular. Welcome. Nice to meet this you. This is the only thing that we can attach to our identity that you have said. Mm -hmm. do, do, can you give us a name? Uh, how you, do you want to be called on Earth? Just, we are part of the Alliance. To be separated from it by a name would defeat the purpose. Uh, I invite Continue. you to, th to think for the future. We, we we usually assign a certain short name for beings like greys, oranges, Arcturians, Pleiadians, and so on. We need to refer. Otherwise, what is the name that you, What is the name that you have given to us already? We didn't. Uh, so far, you are a descriptive name. You are tall beings with triangular face and orange, yellow. Uh, color and uh, wobbly body. That's what we know about you. We will accept the triangular beings as our name. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so what's your mission? To communicate, to access information, to be part of the ascension process whenever possible to help with teachings and also learn. You see, there is no teaching without learning. We also are a part of a healthy mission. We do not want to see any harm done to your people. We do not want to see anything negative happen in this particular solar system or anywhere, actually. But right now, our focus is here on your peoples and your areas. Thank you. Go ahead, Elena. Hello. Uh, what? Yes. Hello, Oris. May I ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, one of your uh, species, uh, I met a triangle head, he, he called himself Tanar, and he said sometimes your species are, are called the Golden Radiance. We are gold, yes. And he said... And got Golden Radiance is from, from another era, but yet it is an era that gives us pride. But right now we try not to focus on our emotions of the past but our present projects. That is why we have left some of our designation behind. We would like to start afresh and be here known as something new and not interfering 
with your species in a way that would cause you to be averted. Mm -hmm. And it's like um, Tanar told me he did not like being called Triangle Head. Well, it is what we are. Okay. So it, if he does not like it, it's just like you may not be like called female or male. But triangle head is what we have. It may not be suitable completely, but we'll have to do for now. At this point, I am not offended by any names because that is not my work. It is not my thought process to be offended by anything at this time. Mm -hmm. If he does not like it, it would be probably because there was something negative and or offensive that was said to him by someone else. Mm -hmm. He just said, call me a golden radiant or by my name, Tanar. Our names are fine. Just speak our names. Okay, so it's it's appropriate to just if 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 the being says my name is this and I I like to be called that, just address it as such. Yes. Yes, we all have our own kinds of acceptances. Mm -hmm. Should we continue? Lena, do you have more? Or should I ask more questions? Yeah, I just um, when I met Tanar, he's he um, he was very. He's like, please don't. First of all, don't call me Triangle Head. <laughs> I, I I I do I do have a name, and please call me by my name or a Golden Radiant. So uh -huh. it's it was. I thought I just asked that question. Thank yes, you. that is fine. Yeah, he please. Is, when you have more questions, yes. Well, no, I. Yes, the Golden Radiance is part of our past and part of who we are. I am trying to establish some autonomy away from names and identifications. Um, have you ever heard about something called the Rainbow Body Bridge? Do you guys work with helping humans to expand their auras and to just uh, work? We know what this is, yes. It is part of all species, for the most part, that are humanoid. Tanar helped me to expand my rainbow body bridge, and there was a blue avian beside him when I met them on a blue sphere. So, and I kept phasing out holographically in and out from the sphere, and they said, focus on the rainbow body bridge to build it to make a steady communication so you don't phase from the sphere. Is that somehow, sometimes how humans come to the spheres? Yes. Okay. Do you understand it? Um, I understood it. I was beamed up through this green light that Tenar sent. I wasn't picked up by a sphere, but the beam, the, the, the green light beamed me up to the sphere but I had to hold the rainbow body bridge of my auric system to, to stay on the sphere, to hold the connection. Yes, it works with the aura. Yes. Mine at the time was not steady because I was feeling emotional stuff, but they helped me, the Blue Avian and Tanar helped me to focus on the rainbow body bridge and to, to keep the aura field steady and to interact with them on the sphere. That is fine. It sounds like it was successful. Yes, I had a beautiful spiritual well, encounter. May I ask what you gained from this experience? I always had questions about where the blue avians come from, and they suggested uh, reading the Voyager's book, as that has some history of blue, or blue avian origins, Ayasha Dean to read the Voyager's yes. material um, because it, it talks about genetics and it talks about ascension and possibly where the uh, Blue Avians origins came from, something Azurite Council. 
Yes. But what did you gain from the rainbow experience? Uh, from the rainbow experience, I gained that my body is a temple and to to not be afraid to expand my energies and to to heal myself, to not worry about. Did you feel the change? Did you feel changes in density while you were in this state? Yes, I felt that I could hold a higher density of about sixth, seventh dimension and not fall down to third or fourth or fifth. In, I was not in flux when I was on the sphere. I could hold the connection steadily, like a physical presence on the sphere and not be worrying about who I'm making contact with, that these beings were who they said they are. Excellent. I will research the experience. But I did want to see what the emotional connection to it was from your side. It was of the light, experiencing the light and just flowing with the waves of the blue avian and tanar and just feeling at peace, so much love and peace and happiness, no matter what's going on on the human side. It's all energy and it's all just beautiful love and compassion. I will have to find Tanar and his research. Mm -hmm. I am from a different section of the ship or the alliance, obviously. Mm -hmm. We are all coming together, though. We come in by shifts, of course. And we have our own thought processes and ideologies. So that is why we may seem very different. However, I do love and understand that these experiences for humanity are rare and beautiful. Also, the experience will help lift you into new vibrations and understandings of who we are and what, we, what our existence is about. We are very happy that the, this particular experiment with you has brought positive re re ramifications to us. It, I, felt, I felt it was about connecting with the different rainbow body energies and about um, reattuning all the auric frequencies at that time because I felt very... Um, very frustrated and scared. My website was taken down with all my spiritual work and ET work. So then they said, it's okay. This, your, your energetic reattunement will help you with your, uh, whatever you're doing on earth. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Everything has been recorded. All the information that was there has been recorded and you will possess it again one day. We have it in the Akashic records, and there is recordings, I am sure, with our peoples and alliances. Mm -hmm. So do not worry. It has not been lost. It has yeah. been recorded for posterity and for education of other species at this time. Your planet is not up to speed with this kind of work, and... It will be shown this work when it is ready. Mm -hmm. So do you. not worry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You can give me the microphone when, when you're ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just shared the experience. Yeah. So. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, it's nice to have Thank a... you for this. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Hey. So, um, I guess the most in, in interesting question is uh, how three of you came together, uh, the Blue Spheres, the uh, Blue Avians, and uh, the Golden Radiance. What brings you together? Common ground of thought process. We agree on many things, and our futures are headed in very much the same directions. And when when you unite your energies, you can accomplish things more quickly and move greater into the future with a greater light and positivity. Uh, what is your specialty in the alliance of the Golden Radiance? I, 
I am a scientist. I mean, all the your species, golden radiance. What, what is the specialty of golden radiance in the this triple alliance? What is our specialty? We have many specialties. There is mm -hmm. not just one. We are all individuals and a community as well. Even in a community where all are communicating one with another, there are different personalities and special interests among each of us. But um, our special interest mm -hmm. is discovery and moving forward in our education, understanding, and helping those to grow with us. What's the principal difference between your species and blue avians? The blue avians have more of a leadership thought process. We do not necessarily feel that leadership is necessary. As a community, as individuals, we guide our own lives and are aware of right, wrong, and what is to be done in the day. I know guidance is always necessary in spiritual ways and in possibly in some management ways for greater success. And that is one reason why we do like the Blue Avians because they do have a good way of dealing with us in our forward movement. We do work together, we do speak together, and we do cooperate one with another. But they have more of an idea of the spatial communities and where to find the things that are being looked for. Excellent. Um, thank you. Um, I, are you guys, any of your species are form a, a hive mind, a collective mind, which is very strong? Yes. We uh, are a strong collective. No, the mind. Do you have a hive mind like some of their insectoids have? Insectoids? Do you have a hive, H-I-V-E, hive mind? No. Oh, I thought... But you said hi, H-I-G-H. -H. Okay. No, we do not have a hive mind. A hive mind would focus around one central being. Mm -hmm. So neither of, your, neither of your three species have, has a hive mind, right? No. Mm -hmm. Is there only three species in your alliance, or is there more? As, it, as detected that are separate and individual, yes. There are some borderline individuals that belong to all species or belong to the universe and not identified. Right. Uh, so what makes you different? What's your, uh, I guess, what, what's the difference between um, Golden Radiance and Blue Spheres in terms of the role in the Alliance? It is a weird, weary, weary, excuse me. There is some interference. Okay. One moment as we clear it up. Thank you. Obviously, the Blue Avians are using also some communicative device at the same time on the same frequency. Mm. That is better. We have moved to another frequency. Thank you. Thank you. Our difference, what makes us different then the blue avian is that what you are asking uh how different are you from blue spheres in terms in terms of the role in the alliance we all are interconnected as an alliance of course but we individually are more of a community than the blue avians are they are more individual is this what you are asking? No, no, I was talking about the blue spheres. 
What about the blue spheres? How different are you from the blue spheres in terms of the role? The blue spheres contain beings and the beings in the blue spheres are of more telepathic nature than we are and have more of a spiritual role rather than an active role. A more computer-like system in the blue spheres. Mm -hmm. But they are also conscious and they have the soul, right? Yes, but uh -huh. are more active as not interactive as we are. Uh huh. I see. They are used and are friendly, but are used as references or reference guides. Are they naturally evolved or created by uh, other beings? They are not created as far as we know. Mm -hmm. They are evolved to this state. Mm -hmm. So we know a lot of other alien races who are dealing with the humanity, like Pleiadian there are many species dealing with humanities and with the different thought processes that are there among you. We okay. ourselves are looking at the expansion of the human race in the sense of energy beings. We look at you as a great source of future energy and thought. We see that you are in a place where you can grow in many directions at one time in some ways. So therefore, there are many of you that can be of great value to the universe very quickly. Thank you. You answered my question, how you are different from the others. But in practical terms, what's, uh, what's your role in the solar system? What do you practically uh, do at the moment? What do we do? We are yes. assisting with all that is happening here. This includes all things. It is confusing the way that you ask your questions, for it is obvious what we are doing. Oh, we just learned about you recently, so it's not quite obvious. How different your role is from other aliens which are involved, like Pleiadians, Reptilians, Lyrans, Arcturians, and so on. All these beings have different energies and contribute in different ways. They all have positive thought processes, some, well, not all, but most have positive thought processes and can work with humans in some ways. One would choose to be helpful with your earth atmosphere problems, such as volcanic, seismic, things of this nature. We are helping more with spiritual expansion, thought process expansion, communication, and with some areas, we are interacting with scientific communities you mean human on earth yes and others that sounds no it cannot be uh, are you talking about mainstream scientific communities or no. some secret we are talking about al allowed communication I don't think there is any allowed communication here. Uh, can you clarify? There are some areas in your science community that allow some communication. Are you talking about secret programs? If that is what you call them. Right, because in scientific community, the aliens are not yet recognized. So you can't really be talking we do to not overextend ourselves, mm -hmm. we just answer primitive questions. 
Are you meaning you're answering them telepathically and just put the answers to the heads of the humans or you're really openly talking to some? No, we will give them the response that they need if it is helpful for their survival. Oh, so it would be uh, not open response, but basically just telepathic answers put in their heads without them knowing that it's coming from extraterrestrials, right? Yes, for us, telepathic is normal communication. I see. So this is confusing because we are talking to you as normal and also telepathically, we are normal communicators. Does this make sense to yes, you? Yes, absolutely. I understand. Yeah, I was thinking that you're translating that to English in Jim's terms, but you're using your language without translating into how would Jim pronounce it, which is fine. This is preferable, I would assume. No, I mean, in terms of our language, your communication wouldn't be called normal, but that's all right. I understand what you meant. Telepathic is not normal yet for us. Correct. Okay, uh, so... But we are speaking, but it is normal for us and ours. Elena, did, did you want to add something? Yes. Um, so my question is, you, you basically um, contact the scientists that are open-minded. I think you're contacting the ones that are open-minded and inspiring them to their highest potential in the scientific work that they do. Is that correct? This is correct. It must be done. Uh -huh. Okay, I understand now. So, some scientists do have an open mind in terms of... Um, there are quite ideas. a few at this time. The because, let me explain. They have seen more things now than ever before. And so the mind must open, yet lest they become stagnant and move backwards. So it inspires them to reach their highest capabilities of creating things and uh, putting that out into the human collective to help change the planet. This is so, yes. Okay, now I understand. It's about the inspiration and... Guidance. This is about how things are guided without interfering. Mm -hmm. Thank but you. When we talk about communicating, this is our way of communicating. We cannot be direct, only indirect, but yet to us, it seems much more direct. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yep, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, my next question was, um, question was um, let's move to let's move the to idea of your biology. biology. How similar are you are to humans and how different you are from uh, Earth humans? We are different from humans and similar as well. Humanoids of all species have some similarities, although basics are different. You are carbon-based humans and units. We are not carbon-based. That is a major difference. We do have functioning organs, such as you, but they do not function in the same way. There is something similar to a heart. There is something similar to liver and pancreas that balance certain chemicals in the systems, but they are not the same chemicals. Um, what's, what replaces carbon in your chemistry? Silicone. Excellent. What's your normal uh, temperature? Temperature, as in atmosphere? No, in your body. Our body temperature yeah. would be thirty-eight 
57. Celsius or Fahrenheit? What? Celsius or Fahrenheit? That would be your temperature Fahrenheit, yes. Thank you. Um, if you touch a human, would there be any negative physical, physiological reaction? In there, either in human or yours? It is possible that the energies would be different and there would be some reaction, but I do not believe it would be fatal. Okay. And uh, what, is, uh, what is that you're breathing? What is it that we are breathing? Yes. Ah, I understand. We are breathing close to what you would call carbon monoxide. Uh-huh. Similar, uh, but not the same. Uh-huh. And what, uh, what replaces water in your system? Or do you have water? Are you water-based? There are water in our system, yes. But it's not as massive as your water system in your bodies. Mm -hmm. We are only about... 17% liquid. Ah. Interesting. Are you, do you have DNA or something which is similar to DNA? Of course. DNA exists in all species, not the same. Uh, are you related to, to humans in any way in terms of genetics? Genetics. In some ways. Let me explain something. Your questions seem rather primitive, but what Elena, Lena, has experienced with us was more of our energy than our physiology. Our energies are much higher and are those that can transform the carbon-based human unit into something greater. She has experienced what is happening between densities on your planet at this time. She has not actually experienced our physicality in any way, but yet she has experienced our energy and the different ways it can change other energies. Mm. May I ask a question? Good. Yes. So you're the the golden radiance have the ability to transcend the human body and to exist on an energy level to correct yes that's what i experienced it wasn't it wasn't completely all physical it was you can travel through space and time and open portals with energy and not need um to be in your human body to do that correct correct this is why the questions were primitive, because it is only one part of the existence that we have. It is only a very limited portion of that which we are. So basically you have the ability to transcend the uh, limitations of the human physical body that you have and go into the higher energies and work on multiple levels that way. Beyond just the this body. This is what we are wishing for other species and for your species as well. You are highly hybridized. This helps us to work with you easier or more easily because there are elements of so many different energies within you. This gives us a vast range of experimentation so that we can work on the the transmutation of physical to energy. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to transcend with my abilities beyond just beyond just the physical body, but work with the energies on multiple dimensions for various communication with species. Is that similar what you do? Similar, but we do also more. And what is the communication? Communication can be within someone instead of sent to someone or communicated to someone. We can become part of you 
and communicate within you to the to the soul of the being that is the being itself the living soul yeah. not just the body yes yes the science of who we are extends outward from the body and the body becomes less important and the science that it contains becomes less important after a time but yet essential to the birth process and how how are you born how do you procreate and we must procreate through physicality but as we become mature the energies are also released so you interact with each other on the energetic level of communication and not just through physical contact true but physical contact is sometimes necessary and um may i ask a question about um the blue avian communication is there certain greeting protocols that happens between every individual that is the same like process greeting Each process culture, there are different greetings within different areas of their cultures. Oh, you see, as cultures are, are everywhere, they have different traditions and different protocols for greeting and understanding one another. We have bridged these with energy communication so that we can go and understand their protocols as they are meant to be energetically. They, therefore, whenever greeting anyone, we may know exactly how to greet them without having to create a different kind of scenario for them or ourselves so that we may interact properly. Um, this is about question the blue avians because when I met you like uh, your friend Tanar uh, from your Tanar, species, yes. yes, it was quite uh, the communication was quite different in the greeting It was more energetic and with the blue avian it was physical symbols about six to ten steps of the greeting So it was this quite is different. one of the, their ritual areas and they use it to let me explain. We are more energetic as a communication people, but we are not forceful in this. We are very gentle about our communication and how we work one with another energetically. The blue avians are more physical and understand physicality in a greater way, and they use it to their advantage. Also, their communication and their protocols are based on the past and how they are expected to be respected. Their respect for one another takes on many steps because it is intercultural within their planet and their species and also with those that they are contacting. So therefore, the 10 steps, five of them will be human and five of them will not be. Mm -hmm. and so it was, every other step will be interactive with your planet and every other step will be you interacting with theirs. And it was said by one Earth individual who has contact with the Blue Avians that the um, greeting process is always the same for everyone and that is never different. Is that correct, or is it different based on each individual person who has contact with blue avians? It would appear not to be different to them, but it would appear to be different to each individual because it is felt in that unique way by them. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be always described as the same ten, 10 steps in the same way for each individual who meets the blue avians. Let me explain something. Between each of them, the 10 steps would be identical always. Within other species, it would be different. But to the human, 
No, the human yes, cannot the describe. Human, it would be the same with that human every time. But to a different human who experienced those same steps, they might describe it differently, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. Because you are unique and different individuals and your perception of things may change how you how you would describe it. Mhm. Mm and the blue avians I noticed they have very particular hand signals and gestures that they yes. do in their 10 steps and you Yes. They go slowly ritualistically slowly through each step when they interact yes. with you. Okay. But still you may see them slightly differently than someone else. Okay. Yeah, that 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 protocol <laughs> The reason for this is your mind is brought up to see hand gestures in different and more particular ways. So in describing a particular hand gesture, you may describe it in a way that was something from your earlier part of life, whereas someone may describe it from a later portion of their life mm -hmm. or something of that nature. Yes. It will always seem a perception rather than the exact procedure that is being done. But if the procedure is done with one person, one on one, it will seem the same every time. And something interesting, I noticed when I met the blue avian, his first blue energy appeared. And then out of that energy uh, solidified the blue avian shape, the physical form. Is that how they sometimes yes. greet you? We greet, yes, one another with energy because that is how we are with one another. Yeah, I noticed first the bl blue energy appeared, just the energy, like I could see blue sort of body-shaped energy, but not the being itself. And after a few minutes, the being stepped out of that blue energy to do the ritual process of introduction. That's fine. That makes sense as you would perceive it, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's um, one way of how the blue avians do it. Uh, Tanar just appeared as he was glowing yellow energy, but I could see the shape right away. It was yes. not hidden. That would be how it would appear to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. There is no more time for me. I must go. They are calling for another try as your thoughts it was greeting you very well thank you thank you so much we appreciate we are help. many of us will speak so you will find many different perceptions of us mm -hmm. thank you this is something that must be experienced by your people to know us Yes. yes. Just as many of you are very different one from another, we as a community are the same but different. Mm -hmm. It's the differences that make you very unique and special. Of course. Thank you. See that the other man, male being, is wearing yellow. Was this to represent East? I think his sound has been lost. Possibly it's the color us? of the Swami order in India. Maybe it's ah. connected to your beings. We relate to this color because it is how we are. Oh, beautiful, like a golden glow, the huge golden glow around you, around the body that you can see. Yes. Not the same, but us, similar. Do you mind give us, giving us a blessing in your language? 
Blessings are common with us, and so that would be something we would enjoy. Being that you have experienced our energy in some ways, the female experienced our energy even more directly. But this is our way. We will share with you our energy blessing as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yes. Beautiful. And the spirit of this blessing will last in energetic form forever. Thank you. Thank you. It's like. It's like t traveling through a green yellow rainbow tunnel throughout time and space and feeling the solar winds about your body traveling throughout space in eternity. It is hard to leave a blessing without great silence afterwards. The respect for all of the depths of eternity and the energies that are there. Mm -hmm. Be well, earth people. I am now in a state of energy. Hello. Yay, Jim. Hey. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'll tell you what. They were very difficult to bring through at some points. Yes. They were. They Their thought process and mine did not gel whatsoever <laughs> at some points. They're, they're very energetic. It's like... You have to ask them questions beyond the simplistic. They, they, pr they prefer to be asked energetic questions that they work with on the energy level. So, yes, they said, I, I gather that they didn't want to talk about their physicality too much. They wanted to talk about their 
expanding energy processes or whatever they want to say, however you want to call it. Yes. But it, was, it was not something they wanted to get into in some ways. It was like, let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally understand. That's how my meeting with one of them happened. It was all about teaching me how to bridge the physical human body with the auric fields and energetically travel and learn, not just yeah. focusing on physicality, going beyond that and expanding everything. Well, it, they explained to me physicality was important, but right now for humans, energy was more important. Wow. Yes. Yes. So but they, they explained that they had physicality and that that was important. But for now, the information they wanted to give to humanity was all about the energy and the, the expansion that they were feeling for humanity. Yeah. I, I had a standard list of questions and they just move through that list of questions very slowly. There was tons of questions on spiritual side, but they, we didn't get to them. <laughs> oh. They just, uh, you know, were so troubled with physical questions. I mean, oh, there, is okay. standard, like, there were several few standard questions, and we would move on to the spiritual, but they didn't get there. Next time. Oh. All right. <laughs> I think Please. that that was his first communication with anyone on this planet so mm -hmm. and he didn't not even know what to say pretty much that's all right. I, I changed his thoughts several times on how he wanted to say things like he said it this way that way this way that way that way that way and i'm like all right okay <laughs> I think wild. he's like, you're asking a standard, basic, primitive, he even said primitive questions. Ask us something that is energetically based. Yes. Yes. I think the primitive questions were harder for him to answer than the more advanced thought process questions. Mm -hmm. And so he was like going, no, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to do that. Ask me the good stuff. Like get get to the yeah. alien meeting experience. How you how you yeah. meet so each he other. Was like, okay. But he wasn't trying to be rude or anything. No. Just, it's like um, you try to enter the library, but you still have to fill out the form. And he was so bored bored by filling out the form he could get into the library. <laughs> yes, exactly. He was like, uh yeah. That sounds, that's a nice way of saying it. Yeah. He's like, I want to, uh, let's talk about the female sp energetic experience with, with, with the other being that she said, ask, ask huh? questions. Because many people have questions about the rituals, the, the greetings, the, how has mm -hmm. it felt to make the yeah. contact? So he, he was, was okay happy. with that. He was okay mm -hmm. with talking about that because he thought that was sort of important because he thought the protocols were important. Um, that's with, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And with certain individuals, the protocol is very important as I learned as well um, with making contact and what I felt, how I made contact with the blue avians, it was 10, 10 parts protocol, but the way I perceived it was different from the individual that, has regular contact with them so okay yes it was in it was I interesting out, out yeah yeah it was interesting because even i did not understand because i was told that this protocol is always the same and it's standard and if it's different then you didn't meet the blue avians but it didn't feel that way to me it felt like yes the protocol is the same it just i interpret it differently from my encounter right. Right. So, it would be so let's continue the show. Now we switch to the questions to Elena. And the yes. topic is the same. Elena, what do you know about the Blue Sphere Alliance? Well, I know that the Blue Sphere Alliance is here to help with the ascension process. They're mm -hmm. here to, to, to bridge the energies, to teach us love, compassion, and honor and respect for everyone, but to to do it in a very loving way 
but to to understand ourselves as human beings to to be able to tell from right from wrong to discern what is real for us and what is not and to work as a collective to bridge our differences even if we agree or disagree they're here to help to energetically rebalance everything so we are more harmonious and in peace with with one another and to go within oneself and look at the soul aspect and to to be in harmony and balance with ourselves and with each other to teach to to understand what being humble is to, to respect for for them respect is very important and for ourselves as, as a species to treat each other with respect no matter whether we agree or disagree on things to not to not bully each other to not even even if we have differences it's okay we can question the differences but at the end of the day come together as communities and and help one another as much as we can that is and it's okay to be to be service to others and service to self as long as it's done in a positive way in a respectful manner to to love oneself and to love others and to to be treated with honor and dignity always no matter what even if there's conflict still still have that in in mind as the soul honor yeah. respect humbleness and humility it is very important at this time and, and I got the feeling that the golden radiance being was studying how he could make that uh, information more acceptable to humans. He was studying how to bring it to humanity in the most powerful and meaningful way. Yes. Uh, it's like you're talking to... Uh uh, an ant on the on the floor you have to actually bend down and get to his level so to be noticed and so far i don't think they did much of that they speak so from so much high that it's um it's um the communication is very limited i, I think I'm, I'm, that's why they're 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 starting to learn but you're right he felt he, he was frustrated with the primitivity but still he wanted to still press forward to learn how to communicate better yeah but so we, as, as they're listening to us we invite them to talk to us more yes. uh the human colony community we all all will be eager to be visited uh in any way possible including telepathic and spiritual mm -hmm. connection so we want to communicate more and we more, want more interaction do you remember his name? Yeah. Oris. Oris? Oris. O-R-A-S. Oris. Okay. Because I would like to call on him again sometime in the future uh, to see. Because he was actually difficult to communicate with in some ways. But other times, he was it was okay. But simple thought processes were hard for him. So I'm wondering if he bridge will we'll be able to bridge that next time. Uh -huh. He he really likes the energetic aspect. He's like maybe ask him questions on the energetic level and yet still be able to somehow make it into the physical level if that makes any sense at all. Absolutely. Well, I think he started to talk about the physicality of their beings. But he was he, just like it's so talk about it so lightness i think uh, th they exist a lot in the light so uh, maybe frequencies like when you're talking with him the frequencies of light maybe bring that in somehow that'll make the communication yeah, easier was, why is this important to humans the physicality portion where where the light portion the energy portion is where you're heading your your now your present and future are more important than your past stuff yeah because they're listening let me answer that question uh basically they're so different that we it makes a lot of us uh be afraid 
and to be less afraid, we have to understand. Oh, so, okay, yeah. So I'm, the first question is, are they dangerous? Would it be, you know, when we express our feelings, we hug. Is it dangerous to hug a, a golden radiant, right? <laughs> Yes, okay. And uh, the next question which he didn't answer was how many genders do they have? For us, it's nice to relate to them at, in a gender fashion and uh, in family fashion. Do they have families? Do they have children? So these are standard questions which kind of bridge the gap. Did he Did he answer that? No, he, he, um, he became bored. <laughs> but, you know, the sp spiritual questions were, do they incarnate in hum as humans? Right? And a lot of about their spiritual life, uh, you know, where are they and what's their religion, what's their understanding of God and so on. Let's do a little bit of spiritual work. Um, Jim, can you give us a, a blessing? Let me start but while you're drinking. Let me start. So the intention is the intention is to connect to the Sphere Alliance, all of them. And to send them the blessing and their gratitude for their ascension work. Thank you, Blue Sphere Alliance. We are your friends and we accept your offer of help. As we come towards you, come towards us. Let's meet and embrace each other energetically in any way possible. We thank you for your protection and we thank you for your ascension work. We do want to ascend. We want, do want to evolve. We do want to shift to a high level. That's our joy and our love and our see of the future, our vision of the future. Much gratitude, thank you. Jimmy can continue mm. if you like. Mm? Jimmy can continue if you like. Um, continue with, what do you mean? A question? With a blessing. Oh, a blessing. Oh, yeah. of course. Elena, if you like to go after Jim, that would be great too. Sure. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. No, Jim first. Okay. Diarashata Ramuhuya Moyama Shandidu Kutia Dalai Kaliarash Motutia Tan Sofoshun Twati Hala Kalava Suti from Puriando Shian Shati for Kushin to Okora Mota Tinti Fat Sefi. Onkora sasa sundu du du sila ashuntoti hallelujah kakwati sushun fariatondu wata unkuri ararata sushuntu and shendifishuns shuhore fansin city katita mukurata santu meashan shin shia karawata Matiatuta, Kuru Wata. Amen. Suti. Yes. Esta yesta nasa, asta apata ita nasia tas, usta nasa naya a, asta ikta anasasa, ishtuta akuta se, siya sasuna tatiata. Asunana akota a ishta a akuta sa sita tata siata. Excellent. So much beauty there is in this universe, and so many beings there that are bringing their love to this culture. Let us open our eyes one to another and share the energies of light, love, understanding, peace, wisdom, community. Hold on strongly to your moral values and the, the things that make you who you are. Much love to you 
and grow in the peace and understanding that all of you are unique and have purpose. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ah. So, um, Elena, what's your sense on the timing for the ascension? When it, when is going to happen? There is that idea of uh, a burst from the sun, which will be attenuated by the uh, spheres, and which will happen sometime soon. Do you f do you have any estimates on the timing? Well, as I said, there's there's no one specific time frame that they never they never give. It's already mm -hmm. happening. The sun is already putting out energies for optimum ascension. And we're already working through the ascension. Mm -hmm. What we did talk by talking to Oris, that's already part of the ascension process. He, he yes. put the focus on not the human, well, what do I breathe? What do I say? How, how do I procreate? He put the, the aspect on the energetic side. And that's part of humanity. We have our physical body, but we're going beyond the physical and working with the energetics because that's what's going to heal diseases. That's what's going to open our understanding of other ET species and cultures because most of them work on the energetic frequencies and telepathy. We're starting to get into that, and that's part of the learning of the ascension. We are in it already with what the channelers are doing, with what the contactees are experiencing. Hey, good example, mm -hmm. CIA released 13 million documents last week. Some of it UFO, some of it remote viewing, some of it other things. But that's part of the, the revealing process. This year is revealing what's been hidden. And that's already ascension. It's not a amplified one-stop shop just... Whew, it's 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 an ongoing ascension process. There's not a beginning, middle, and end. It's it's continuous flow of ascension energies coming in, us experiencing the downloads and uploads of this energy, and there's no date. It's already we're already in it, and it will continue on and on. Yeah, even after you reach a certain goal of ascension, it continues yes. because it does, it is our continuous evolution into the light and into a lighter density always getting closer to the element of, of God because that is what evolution is we move toward our creator and our creator is all, all everything that we want to be so we will continually move that direction forever mm-hmm and some of us feel the energies uh, on a higher level than others. Some of us are letting go of pain and hurt and past life trauma. It's all about letting that go and assimilating new energies into the body to balance all of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and not being afraid to ask for help when help is needed. Because right. that's part of and also saying, who, who am I? And who are the people around me? And how can I help? That's why there's so many, uh, I believe that's why a lot of the species are also giving spiritual messages and, and why angels are appearing so often is that they want to bring people to the mindset of a higher realm of thought so that they can actually be on the same page because many humans are still very third dimensional and and are trying to, you know, work through their lives and struggle and everything. And they, this is more of a, a look to the future and sense the energies that are a beyond this moment. I mean, they're in this moment, of course, but they're growing stronger all the time. So it is that there's a lot of spiritual messages coming right now. Mm -hmm. And there's no one date for for this it's continual and uh, i know everybody asks for a date <laughs> um the date is now we are in it we are experiencing it for for and making connections and you know i can't say it's going to be a hundred years from now or today it, it's 
it's always ascension is always happening it's not that ascension will happen it's it's evolving in the ascension it's ascension is always happening yep and it's for individual too yes each yes, person yes. will experience it in the way that they're supposed to and, yes and it will be different for everyone and, and unique and beautiful yes exactly and um it's 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 connecting with the energies with your intuition with your higher self and what your guidance is giving you using the sermon yeah. to understand what's going on in the media social media what's going on in mainstream media understand the hidden aspects of what they're saying because they're saying one thing but behind their words there's something else that's there so understanding and not being in fear of okay we have a new president based on everything that somebody has said about him but that might not be true like understanding beyond the surface of what's being said and seen and done what's yeah. energetically there behind everything because there's always something there more than what is just meets the eye mm -hmm. that's that's a huge Thank part of it so yeah, yeah i was working uh the lately i was working on forgiving myself and forgiving others and uh, i just realized that uh their unusual thing for me would be like happening lately is i would look at the tragic events of my past and say all right i can live with that it's fine i can smile and what trauma there like um you know recent trauma right the elections were the recent trauma and just smile and say whatever right mm -hmm. and smiling to the childhood events just remembering and smiling to them and saying all right I accept that as well which is a hard part right you kind of until yes. now it was very charged when they ask you about i i started writing memoirs and uh, the memories and they were still charged with stuff and just to discharge them just take away the emotional charge from them and uh, kind of release was uh, a big deal so my question is uh what is changing in the last week i i shifted a lot in the, in the past week i was reading wilcock and then listening to to the sphere alliance news and it was a huge shift for me so what is what is happening with the reality reality is being very creative right now They're, we're manifesting so much stuff it's Everybody has needs and wants in what they want to realize. So they're working on doing that right now. It's literally a creative palette, so to speak. What do you want to paint? What do you want to make? What do you want to make happen in this reality? It's literally shaping your reality. It's it's a having a blank canvas and just going drawing or painting and see what do I want from this reality? This is the time to to make that possible to chart your course and it's like the energies feel the energies chart that course do it mm -hmm. that's what it is and there's a lot of energy making itself known to people that uh, it's new beginnings for a lot of people they're feeling a different kind of energy i've been doing a lot of sessions uh lately with with people that are saying i'm feeling that something different than I've ever felt before and they're telling them you're on a new path now this is a new path for humanity this is a new path for you take it's your individual path and you are growing and you're moving forward and don't be discouraged let it let it make some positive inroads with you and let it uh, bring you up and make you lighter instead of uh, you know, do not uh, question it too much or make it something that it's not, but just let it be and let it move forward because they're feeling the forward motion of it. So, and it's going to help them get through a lot of things that are coming up. So the density is not gone yet. <laughs> Third dimension is still here, but we're huh. still, we're moving through it. So. <laughs> Yeah. And we're, we're going back from third to fourth to fifth, and we're shifting in and out of them. We're still experiencing connections with third dimension, fourth and fifth, and just 
just uh, interacting and in learning how do you navigate these dimensions and how do you balance this all out, this new energy flow? Yeah. Yeah, for me, the message was, um, yeah, first understanding is it's a new, a new season on the TV series. A lot of things change. So it's the same things, just uh, the proportions change radically. So it's basically the new uh, storylines waving into the storyline. And the second message mm -hmm. was that just clean up your environment and be ready to jump. So don't mm -hmm. carry with you the stuff. So you have to like kind of make it neat, make it clean, make it uh, catch up with your depths and other things which are on your list because you will, you will have to be ready to jump very soon somewhere. Yes. And popularity, like what I'm getting in from the mainstream, from the government, if you guys want to hear, making um, making remote viewing popular, making ETs sound popular and interesting, making space sound popular and interesting. What are we hearing? Like we're hearing about ETs. We're hearing about UFOs. It was on Fox. You know, the Mexican government released that video about UFO footage, about their military jets recording that and it, it, it St Stephen Bassett talked about he got 10 minutes on the air with Fox News and CNN live uh -huh. he he got his 10 minutes on national primetime television so it's about making these topics very popular to the people and getting them interested so when they disclose this stuff it won't be like oh my god this is all popular I think mm -hmm. the intention is to to make it very popular and to get the people interested. So when it's actually all out there, the people will go, oh yes, that's very nice. And they there won't be this fear mongering process of disclosure and this scare tactics. So government on the government list, making this popular and interesting, putting in sci-fi into the mainstream with more movies, more disclosure, and then when the actual disclosure is all out there, people are going to say, oh, that's now the normal. It's good. Uh -huh. right. So that's, that's part. Cool. This is cool and awesome. So, and not be, you know, distrustful. Like they're, they're, they're preparing the way they're, they're laying out the groundwork, so to speak, and putting it out into the media stream. I think that's what the government is up to. I, uh -huh. And I think there's more information out there now than ever before that would, would 10 years ago be unacceptable is now very acceptable. Yes, so, very much so. And so it's becoming a lot more acceptable even to be a channeler. 10 years ago, it was not that acceptable. Now, more acceptable. Uh, mm -hmm. People are coming to channelers for information, for for uh, spirituality, for different things. And whereas ten years ago, it would have, or maybe even 20, 20, 10 years ago and twenty years ago, very unacceptable. So, um, but now much more acceptable because they're starting to understand that this information isn't bogus and that it's not. It's not just uh, somebody making a living of, of telling stories. So it's wonderful. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, yeah, and for, for contact, a person who has contact with ETs, they've claimed to have, have contact to ask through the channel alert to talk to the ET on basic level or advanced level. That's amazing, too, because in the past we didn't have those opportunities. And right. now we do to, to have humans interact with the ET through the channeler and to ask questions and to do it in a recording like this. That's amazing. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question is blue spheres. <coughs> what was your experience of the blue sphere? Can you describe it? What was my experience? Yes. <laughs> I've never traveled in a blue sphere itself. I've never been picked up by blue sphere. But I ended up being on a blue sphere when I met the blue avian and had the ritual 10 step contact with mm -hmm. the hand signals and um, and then meeting Tanar. That was inside a blue sphere. And I didn't feel like it was uh, technological 
per se. I felt like it was energetic, huge energetic sphere that mm -hmm. the three of us were in. So it felt very biological and energetic. It was a huge blue sphere near somewhere near the earth. But mm -hmm. I was beamed up by Tanar's energy. It was an energy green beam of light that beamed me up up there. So it wasn't a blue sphere that took me to the big blue sphere. Mm -hmm. It was just a beam of light, a green beam of light that was part of his energy that beamed me up to be inside the blue sphere. But I had to, I had to build up my energetic vibrations to be in the same energy frequency as the blue sphere to, to be able to organically stand there with my energies matching up to the sphere's energies. To, for th that was adjusted through working with the Blue Avian and Tanar. Because I kept fading in and out from the sphere. Wow. You know, like, my body kept just disappearing and then reappearing. You know, like, a malfunctioning hologram, except this is a phys my physical body and my energy body kind of not, not, not in sync. So they helped me to, to build that bridge, that rainbow body bridge, so I could physically stay in the sphere and interact on that energetic level with them, that their their level of energy. So that was my experience with the blue sphere. Jim, do you have any? They patient? want people to know that experience because other people are going to experience this as well, and they want them to be able to interact with that energy because they feel that it's important that people match their energy levels to the sphere's levels. And actually, your sphere level was lower than it actually could have been. They have a huge energy sphere level, and they're getting humans used to their energy levels in different levels of energy in that sphere. And that will be, uh, they will be bringing people to the spheres to get them into the energy levels that they need to be so to move forward in the way that they are uh, seeing the movement going. And it was interesting. They picked me up when I was distracted and distressed. So I wasn't expecting any contact with, with them. I never expected to meet a yeah. golden radiant or a blue avian. That was not on my to-do list to meet them. It was never... They, they, they picked me up when my website was down, when I was distracted and distressed, and they were like, okay, let's work with you to rebalance your energy so you can learn something from us, interact, and adjust to the sphere energy. So they picked me up at a time that was not convenient for me at all, but it was a great experience because I was happier and more balanced after, after it. So Absolutely. When I spoke to the Blue Avian recently through Jim, it was a channeled communication. I invited them to telepathically speak to me. And right after I hand up the uh, webinar, I felt, you know, that they're doing something in the head. It was on the right side, very heavy, but it was inconvenient for me because I, I, I just finished the webinar. So I welcomed that, but there was no breakthrough. I, I wasn't able to step forward towards that communication. And well, recently I, uh, I invited Blue Spheres to, to my meditations. They were deep, but I don't remember anything. Wow. Jim, uh, go ahead. Do you want to say something? Well, no, I, I, I think just... <laughs> yeah, sometimes they just pick you up and whether it's convenient or not for you. <laughs> right. Jim, you wanted to say something? Um, I... When I was channeling the Blue Avian, I couldn't remember anything that I said when I was channeling right. Blue Avian. Yeah. They're, they're different. They're different. Okay, Jim, uh, take a deep breath. And uh, so far, you were trying to, uh, you, you, you successfully answered a lot of questions. And you are in a teaching mode. How about you practice asking questions? Sometimes asking is uh, as important as answering. So here well, is, uh, I had prepared questions, but it wasn't on this line of questioning. Sure. But <laughs> Here's Elena. So if you have uh, a good question to ask, go ahead. I, I see I had prepared a different, a whole different line of questioning, but that's all right. But uh, I would, I know that energetically, Elena is very in touch with a lot of different energies and a lot of different things. 
And I just wanted to know the difference, how this was different from some of your other alien interactions. It was on a very advanced energetic level. Like usually when I meet different ET species, either telepathically, sometimes physically, sometimes through the astral, um, I'm never told to go read a book. The Blue Avian told me to go to read the Voyager's material from the Ayasha Dean um, author. And they said to me, our history is very complicated, how our origins are complicated. We have like 48 stranded DNA and it's hard to explain this. So we're not going to explain our history. The blue radiant, the golden radiant will explain their history. We will not be explaining our blue energy history so much. Go read the Voyager's material. So, and I was shocked that the blue avian told me to go read a book. That's how different <laughs> Did their it energy was. Seem did their energy seem familiar to you or did it seem very uh, different? It seemed familiar to me because they have blue energy around themselves, like this blue aura. Um, when I met the blue avian, I saw his blue aura first and then he stepped out of that aura to, in the physical aspect. And I'm like, oh, blue is is, cool. is, is is my color. It's my one of my predominant or it feels blue. Did you feel like that subconsciously you were gaining information that they were, you were assimilating information from them? Yes, yes, I did. But they wanted me to go and physically read two books, which ETs yeah, don't that's... tell me to go and do something, go read something from Earth. Which is the second like, one? Uh, Voyagers the... one and two. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, it has a lot of material on the origins of Earth, Earth history, the different ET species involved, the government agenda. It has a lot of um, material from the Guardian races. Because Ayasha Dean is, is a contactee. She's a teacher. And these Guardian races um, downloaded a lot of information to her through the Kelanta energetic communication system. How did Energy it change? Levels. How did it change your actions within the next couple of days? Did, was, was it a long-term reaction or was it just something that wore off? Or do you feel that it's still with you and moving forward? It's still with me because the law of one material, that's not what yes. I thought it was. I thought it was something very negative and very distrustful of it. And then... What I learned is the law of one is channeled materials. It's quite interesting. And the Voyager's material is based also on the law of one concepts. So I actually started reading a bit of the law of one. I'm like, oh, it's not like law, law telling you what to do. It's something quite positive and interesting. And it's another aspect of channeling in ETs and human history. So for me, that was a huge change. I no longer say the law of one material is negative and I'm distrustful because that's not. Oh, you're gone. I, I can hear. No, no, I can hear you, but I can't hear uh, Elena. Yeah, I can't hear Elena right now. I think it will come back. Oh, she's gone. Am I gone? There you go. Oh, you're back. Okay. The, the, there was a bit of interference there. Yeah. Um, like I was saying, the law of one material is not what I thought it was, and I'm very open-minded to it. I've started reading it. It's very positive. It's not like laws telling me what to do. It's connected to Earth history. It's connected to ETs. It's connected to the universe. So in the law of one material is very much connected to the Voyager's material because it's on the same concept of what the guardians um, t imp like gave information to Ayasha and what the law of one is also saying. It's very sim similar. So I am more positive towards channeled material now. Like I had no idea the law of one was channeled material. Now I understand what it actually is, and I'm quite, um, I'm more 
open-minded to the earth history, what happened to the earth of the different species involved. And that's what the Blue Avian in Tanar really gave me, that, that key concept of don't be afraid to look at materials, don't be afraid to read these books. Um, and sometimes ET communication is different from one species to the other. So to just yes. explore it and to I, be in balance. Have you written any books at all yet? Me? No. I, I, uh, I did put a compilation of a crystal book, just what I've learned and a uh, compilation that's on my website. But I don't feel like I need to write anything a book. I have a website. I have the Awakening Cosmic Reality YouTube channel. A lot of information of what I've learned from ETs I've put out there. Um, it's out there. People are studying, reading it, looking at the shows. So it's 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 everything that needed to go out there went out there. So I don't I don't feel like I need to write a book. I, I've I've cool. presented it through website format, readings and stuff, and and these uh, these shows with you guys. Yes, Voyagers. Yes, Ayesha Dean, yes. Cool. I just, just uh, I found it on Amazon. It's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it goes back. This is from the 1990s, and it's all relevant information to what's <laughs> happening now. There, And she was talking in the books through the Guardians about 2017 being an important year of our making our choices and where we're going. It, so. Well, there's a lot of energy that has been awakened on the earth in the last several years. And even Mother Earth has been guiding people to write about the new energies and how to work with them in a new ways. So it is very obvious by a lot of actions and a lot of information that there are a lot of new energies that are here and new realizations of these energies so it's cool it's very good i i just i was just surprised that an et such a highly evolved et would go tell me to read a book it's like that's never yes. happened to me before let me ask <laughs> the, the questions which i um uh, i think i asked you last time but maybe i intended and didn't but i don't know the answers yet so uh elena what's your uh favorite race in terms of the spirit what like like are you from arcturians or any other race which you know is it possible to share that sure On i am level? yeah i'm an uh, andromedan uh, played in hybrid so spiritually i'm very connected to those two species um in my energy body I'm 16 feet tall and I'm blue. So that's associated with Andromedan Palladian energies for me because I've been a guardian of the Andromedan galaxy and Milky Way galaxy for billions of years. And I always keep coming back to these star systems, to these galaxies, two galaxies, because the energies feel I'm very connected to, th to those energies of that guardianship. So I always keep on coming back to Andromeda quite a bit cool. to me uh, those i'm andromedan and i'm pleiadian uh-huh thank you humanoid um, always yes. humanoid uh-huh yeah um i i don't know how much time we, we want to go i guess maybe another few minutes i wanted just a little bit little more update on the agarthans do you have what exp what experiences do you have did you have with agarthans um, I was, I had lifetimes with the Agarthan network uh -huh. and uh -huh. I was always the information keeper, archives, libraries, and I have access to their knowledge libraries holographically. I could go in and access their, 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 the library systems that they, they have. Cause I had a physicality li living in Agartha at one point, I believe like 400 years ago or 600 and going back to Egypt as well, a connection there. So I still talk to them sometimes, to the Agartha network. Um, I get a lot of healing and I also go down holographically into their crystal chambers and work with their crystals and get information that way. So 
the Agartha networks have a lot of information on Earth history, how it all began, what species was here. They have that knowledge to share with humanity. And I think the knowledge needs to be shared. So they have quite a bit Earth history in their libraries to, to share with us. Cool. Did you visit yeah. them? Um, do you visit them recently, like in in your astral holographic projections? Are you in contact with them? Yes, I was in contact with a crystal healer about a month and a half ago because I had a horrible, horrible migraine. And mm. she put me in this um, blue orb, basically. Blue orb with a crystal inside it. And I was, my energies were rebalanced. So that was oh. my last experience with with one of the uh, crystal healers from Agartha. A Shri. They called themselves the Shri group. A Shri? A Shri. Oh, so that is a healing group or the uh, society? They're one of the 17 groups that that live in Agartha network. They're, she is primarily... The, the, the woman I made contact with, she's primarily a healer priestess type, but th they're a lot, they're into the healing, the spiritual aspect, their group. From what I could tell, briefly talking to her, it's mainly spirituality, healing, healing aspect. That wow. group of healers, yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I... I feel a connection to Agartha Network. I feel a connection to Antarctica. I have a, a I have a connection to the secret space programs because I uh, apparently I I have a huge connection to Mars and a history of being in this ICC interplanetary corporate conglomerate group with them. So it's I decided to try on a few different hats in this lifetime and to. Mm -hmm experience quite a bit of different different types of energies and beings and groups uh do you know the beings nephilim have you any personal contact have you had any personal contact with nephilim i have never had contact with the nephilim because i understand they're like reborn angels ah walking the earth is, is that correct understand i don't know i um i'm i'm looking for a name for the group with the um, uh, elongated skulls, humans from Earth with elongated skulls. And I was thinking oh. that on, on the internet they're called Nephilim sometimes. You know, there is a lot of um, the remnants in uh, archaeological findings of different sizes with elongated skulls, like going backwards. And oh, yeah. Some yeah. people call them Nephilim, so I was wondering if they are around and... Um, well, they were hybridized human species because there's been a lot of experimentation during Atlantis time and before billions of years on this Earth. So there are a bunch of um, different hybridized human species from those experiments. And, or maybe other worlds. And from other wor worlds because there was alien DNA spliced with humanoid DNA of this planet. So that's where you have the elongated skulls, different heights, you know, I just did a presentation about Antarctica, mm -hmm. and apparently there is these Atlantis outposts in Antarctica that are still mm -hmm. functional, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of genetic DNA splicing experimentation done in those outposts. There's skulls, there's little bodies of these um, these humanoids with elongated skulls in Antarctica. So I wouldn't necessarily say they're all Nephilim. It's it's mm -hmm. it's um, it's a mixture of different genetic strands, humanoid, alien combined together. And I had about 50 images that I spliced together to, to make a uh, graph of what they mm -hmm. looked like. It's in my presentation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm familiar with what you're talking about, about the elongated skulls. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say they're all Nephilim. I'd say they come from different branches of the genetic human st strain of all the different humanoids that have been here on this planet and uh, also what, what, alien genetic strands. Mm -hmm. What I heard, they are more ancient than Earth humans. They are more like our ancestors who uh, live outside of Earth and uh, still present on Earth in small numbers. And uh, 
they were the ones from Maldek, destroyed the big planet Maldek. Some so, of them were, yes. So, um, but you know, yeah, we need to kind of investigate because they seem to be playing a huge role in uh, in the runaway civilization, human runaway civilization. So yeah. we need to figure out who they are. We uh, Jim recently channeled one of them, but. Um, it was only the beginning of conversation and it was very slowly moving forward. It was um, very reserved, very reserved. Well, I'd say they do go back to the Atlantis times and even before Atlantis, mm -hmm. billions of years before. Mm -hmm. So they walked the earth a long time ago and they still walk among us still. So I could, I could from, because how I tap into energies is intuitively. I just tap mm -hmm. into the history of the planet intuitively. When you say mm -hmm. Nephilim, what I get is they existed here um, in their original creation of Earth when Earth was first created in the higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've existed here on Earth and walked the Earth. And their DNA was taken and genetically spliced with different hominid humanoid species over the course of their Earth's evolution and also other alien DNA. So it's been heavily spliced and genetically modified. You've had your giants, you've had your shorter humans, you've had your mid-sized humans, different skull shapes and, you know, brain function capacity, lower brain capacity, higher brain function. So it's, it's, it's all been done with the Nephilim and other species, even alien DNA. And Antarctica factored hugely in that time span of that experimentation on Earth. So the Nephilim genetics are there in, in, in those Atlantic outposts and other outposts on the planet. So there's a lot of hidden history and um, relics and antiquary that is going to um, be spoken about. It already is. And the Nephilim are just one of these groups. That's in that information. That's what I can intuitively pick up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's cool. All right. Let's finish with blessings, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to do one or you want me to do one? Um, all right. I will start, I guess. Let's do the same order. Me, Jim, and uh, Elena. Would it work? All right. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, the universe. Thank you, the creation. Thank you, the creator. Thank you, the mother, divine mother. Thank you, our friends, for helping us. Thank you for your protection and support. We are eager to move forward. We are excited with the new developments. We invite more healing. We invite more energy. As we step forward, step toward us. As we go into the universe, we invite help and friendly communication. We are eager to meet our galactic friends face to face we are, we are eager to shift up and expand we offer our service we offer our experience we offer our desire for the knowledge we offer our desire for the reunion with those who were with us long time ago we want to reunite we are full of love and we would love to share this love with um, our friends and we welcome the spiritual guidance and spiritual reconnection amen thank you mother father god for this time of connections and communion uh love and energy connection of energies with ourselves and those that are all around us in space and on the earth we ask that you be with us and guide us and help us to understand more about all these different energies 
and how they are going to help us and how they're helping us to advance and move forward. We also ask that you would keep our uh, energies positive and make them uh, aware of all the other positive energies that we can uh, bring into ourselves and cause advancement with the human race and with our own selves. Thank you for this time of sharing information. Thank you for this time of uh, wisdom and understanding. So therefore, we ask you now to just give us a good sense of healing as we move forward. Heal us and make us whole so that we can go out and do what it is that we need to do as a purpose in this life. Thank you very much for your love and your understanding, your wisdom and guidance. Amen. Thank you for the beautiful communication of the ETs today. Thank you for the beautiful time that we share with us, the humans in our communion with each other, the blessings, the love, the compassion, the honor, that we come freely together to explore who we are, as beings, as the creator beings that we are and will be. Thank you so much, Mother Gaia, Father, Son, planetary bodies all around us for holding such beautiful energies for us today and always. Many blessings. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I'm very curious about the questions that Jim wanted to to ask and go in that direction at some point as well. Let's schedule uh, another meeting. Yeah, that would be lovely because this this was very interesting, but I get the feeling that there's there's more that Jim wanted to explore in, in his stop, direction. Let me, let me stop the broadcast and we will schedule the meeting. I don't think we should okay. schedule it on, uh, on mm -hmm. uh, air. Yeah. So um, goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Uh, you know how to find us. It's humancolony.org and um, Hukula on YouTube and Hukula group on uh, Facebook. You know how to find Elena. And Elena, can you remind our, your, us your website? Uh, my website is Messages from a Star Traveler. You can just type that in into any search engine. It'll come up. And as well, my YouTube channel is, YouTube channel is Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. Mm -hmm. So on YouTube, so you can find me there as well. I post information and interviews there. So thank, thank you. you. Cool. All right. Goodbye, everybody. We'll go offline now. Stop <laughs> broadcast. <laughs>